the friendly atheist put out 20 arguments against God's existence. And this is part of a series answering those arguments one at a time. Here's the next argument. The more we learn, the less reason we have to believe in God. Now on the surface, this argument seems rational, um, but I think it betrays um, perhaps an, a, a lack of awareness about some of the major issues related to the existence of God and to arguments for the existence of God. Because I would say that this is not only not true, it's completely upside down. The more we learn, the more reason we have to believe in God. Allow me to make my case. It is true that I, I don't look at lightning and think that each bolt is being miraculously caused individually by God in the moment against the laws of nature. I don't think that. And I don't think I'm supposed to think that as a Christian. But we have more thoughtful and sophisticated reasons to believe in God than we have ever had before. In fact, as science and philosophy and the studies of archaeology and history continue to flourish... We are actually adding to our arsenal of good reasons to believe in God. Let me give you some examples. The Kalam cosmological argument was, is actually a, an older argument, but it has been revived and altered slightly by the evidence that I've discussed in one of the other videos in this series. That is the evidence that the universe has a beginning. We already had philosophical reasons for believing the universe had a beginning, but, but now we had these really strong scientific reasons, and that came together with the philosophy so that we can use this idea that the universe had a beginning in an argument for God's existence that is very powerful and very profound. And if you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to, to familiarize yourself with it, the Kalam cosmological argument. Arguments from the fine tuning of the universe. That is that the universe is so intricately fine tuned, it bears evidence of design, even in the constants and qualities that we see in the universe. This is stuff we didn't know a thousand years ago. This is stuff that modern science has been supplying to us as reasons to believe in God. Paul Davies, the physicist, puts it this way. There is, for me, powerful evidence that there is something going on behind it all. It seems as though somebody has fine-tuned nature's numbers to make the universe. The impression of design is over Whelming. This is just one of the arguments that has been strengthened by the evidence that we've recently discovered. Alvin Plantinga's evolutionary arguments against naturalism is a newer argument for the existence of God that is quite profound and kind of a heavyweight argument. Arguments from intelligent design have been supported through the biological complexity of life at the micro level. This is the stuff that convinced former, famous former atheist Antony Flew to believe in a creator even after a whole career of saying God didn't exist. Why did he believe? He said microbiology convinced him that there was a designer for life. This is stuff we didn't have years ago. Studies in protein folding and biological complexity at the micro level. This stuff is powerful evidence of design. When it comes to the text of the Bible, we now have the ability to catalog, categorize, and cross-reference better than ever before. And this has helped an argument for the inspiration of the Bible, which is in the category of undesigned coincidences, which is something one day I, I want to cover on my channel. And by the way, if you show that the Bible has evidence for supernatural inspiration, that is evidence for God. So these are just some of the arguments that have been strengthened by the evidence we have nowadays that we perhaps didn't have as strong in the past. In addition to new and newly bolstered evidences for God that we have for modern science, we have classical arguments for God's existence that still have withstood the test of time. So if you're going to claim that the more we learn, the less reason we have to believe in God, that, that bold, bold claim seems to be refuted by multiple examples from different disciplines and fields of research, things that we have recently learned that have bolstered us in our faith in God's existence, and rightly so. Sometimes I think that atheists are sustaining their atheism by never noticing or perhaps not thinking seriously about the evidence we have for God. This is why oftentimes they're able to say, there is no evidence, yet there is quite a lot, quite a lot. The next video in this series answers an argument against God's existence from the idea that Christians sound crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But check out the whole playlist. I'll put a link in the description and up on the screen for you to look at. Um, I hope that this is a blessing to you. Um, and thanks Cam and John for working with me. This has been fun.